good morning to everyone who is able to join us this morning. We are attempting a new style, a new way of streaming our sermon for today. We are grateful uh, for a anonymous donor who has given us this new way of trying to live stream. And so this morning we are going to be in the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter, verses 13 through 18. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now when the wise men had departed, behold, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of, the e out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise man, became furious, and he sent to kill all the male children in Bethlehem and in all the region who were two years old or older. According, he sent to kill all the in all the region who were two years old or younger according to the time that he kept, uh, that he had obtained from the wise. Filled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard from Ramah, weeping and lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted. angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child to his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was over Judah, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he drove to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in the city of Nazareth, that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled. And he shall be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are going to tell the Christmas story, you must be prepared to tell the entire Christmas story. We all in Advent are being prepared for the great feast of Christmas. And yet during that time of Advent and contemplation and repentance and preparation for the Lord's we simply are excited. We can't help, even in, the, even in the season of repentant Advent, we can't help but have a little bit of anticipation, a little bit of joy, a little bit of that rose candle, a little bit of hoping of the great promise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We put up our trees we put up the stockings. We prepare for Christ in every way that we know how. We wrap the presents. We place bows upon them. We even place names upon our presents to and from so that all may know who blessed and gifted the child, mother, father, brother, whoever it might be. And so... With all that preparation, 
It comes Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day, and maybe we go to divine service on Christmas Eve, maybe we go to divine service on Christmas Day, but surely enough, the time will come when there is nothing but torn paper, a sense of presence, sense of maybe being fulfilled by the earthly things that our loved ones have given us, and all that wrap, ripped wrapping paper gives us a different sense, a different understanding of Christmas. Because, after all, it's all over. Christmas is over. And it was only, it only took about two to three hours on Christmas Day for Christmas to depart from our midst. And we ask, why all that time of preparation? Why all that time of, of repenting? Why all that time? It's like a wedding. You spend months and months and months preparing for that wedding and it's over in 20 to 40 minutes. It's like a blur. And after all that, what is there? A man and a woman standing in bright glee for they are wedded and their lives can be again. So it's Christmas. Christmas, we have that great anticipation, as I said, great preparation, and then a couple of hours, maybe Christmas Eve, maybe Christmas Day, it's over. I think that we need to retrain our brains. If we spend all that time preparing for Christ's coming in the flesh, then likewise, we should celebrate Him according to the liturgical church here. Twelve days of Christmas. Not the twelve days before Christmas, but the twelve days after the Christ Mass. After December the 25th. We continue with the twelve days of Christmas, and so we do here this morning. We give thanks for the twelve days, and in the Sunday after Christmas, when we hear these words, Rise, take the child and his mother to flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child and to destroy him. And he rose and took the child by, and his mother by night, and departed to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. And so the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and told him to rise and take the child and his mother. Why? Because Herod was seeking out to destroy him. And Herod would go about this destruction by any means necessary. He would destroy all of the children two years old or under, just to cover all of his bases, just to cover his self, make, to make sure that he destroys the Messiah, the Son of God. And so if we're going to tell the story, let's tell the entire story. All of the children, all of those children who were destroyed by the hatred and malice and even the insecurity of Herod. All of those children must be memorialized. This is why we have to tell the entire story. They should be memorialized. They should be remembered. For their death was not a, a figment of their imagination. These children were slaughtered. These children were killed. These children all the day long, their mothers in weeping agony and lamentation. These children, lives brought to an end. But was it all for naught? Was there any purpose? Was there any sense in what appears to be a senseless violence taking children and having them, as, as the scripture says, destroyed? Not merely killed, but destroyed in body and heart and 
throat, and lives completely. So, do, it, do their deaths matter? They do. Again, this is why we should tell the entire story. The joy of Christ's coming is certainly something to rejoice in. However, imagine all of those children who died for the sake of Christ. All of those children who were destroyed that Christ might live. All of those children who by their souls and by their hearts cried out not only with lamentation, but also with joy. For they lived in the midst of Christ, taken on flesh. And so in the wake of Christ's birth, Joseph listened to the angel and departed. And the children were slain in the wake of Christ. Again, what can we learn from this today? Today we can learn from this that our Lord and Savior was not merely sustained as if He left the children to be destroyed, but rather that Christ Himself would be destroyed according to the children, uh, for the sake of the children now and the sake of the children during His infancy. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ was slain Himself. In fact, He was brought into this world in order to be slain. He took on flesh in order to be nailed to the cross. He became, He came into this world, this, this despicable, ugly, and dirty world. He who had, knew no sin then became sin for us. And when He was crucified, died, and was buried, He told His disciples to go forth and baptize both Jews and Gentiles. Go into all the ethnic. Go into the Gentiles and baptize them. So, our dear Lord, who upon this altar gives His flesh and blood for us to eat, so that He might sustain us in body and soul into life everlasting. So He does for our children today. There is a wake of children, a stream of children, after Christ's death and resurrection and ascension, who were destroyed, who were killed, those children who died. I am them. You are them. The children before Christ are them. For as they looked forward to Christ Himself, His death and resurrection, His baptism, which made all waters clean and a lavish washing and renewal, so also there has been a stream of children who have died to the flesh and who have risen in Christ Jesus. If we're going to tell the whole story, if we're going to tell the story, let's tell the whole story. The slaughter of the for Christ and after Christ. The slaughter is not merely the ending of a child's life, but rather by the blood that was poured from Christ Himself, their sacrifice mattered. Christ's sacrifice matters. Death matters. For in the of holy baptism, we drowned and we die. In the waters of holy baptism, we are killed and we arise and we arise to a new life. And so did the children that Herod so callously destroyed. They too in heaven rejoice. They too look upon us as we commune, and they join in with angels all the company of heaven. They are the children of Christ. And you know what? As we are washed in the waters of holy baptism, we are brought into the resurrection of Christ. And likewise, we receive 
a foretaste of the feast to come. And for those who were destroyed by Herod, they look upon we who commune. We who commune on a foretaste of the feast to come, commune with us in the heavenly feast of the Lamb in His kingdom. The same Christ who feeds them in heaven feeds us here on earth, feeds us here at Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church. We must be grateful for the children who were slaughtered for the sake that Christ would live so that Christ who was slain died his death that we might live. And when our time of dying comes, when we close our eyes in death, we will hear the words in the voice of Jesus Christ. You are not forsaken. You are my own. I have called you by name in the waters of holy baptism. I have held you close to my breast from the moment that you were and I have not let go at the moment of your death. Therefore, let no man put asunder the love that is in Christ Jesus. Just as in a wedding, there's so much preparation, there's so much time and effort put into a wedding. And then maybe 15, 20 minutes, just a blink of an eye, two become one. So it is with Christ. So it is with Him. We prepare during Advent for the coming of Christ Jesus. In a blink of an eye, our lives are over. What is left Jesus Christ. And he is you, the church, led to Christ. That we carry in this world, but be called into the wedding feast of Christ. We trimmed our wicks having a store of oil. Christ says, come into the wedding feast and to those who have forsaken him, those Herods out there will hear, hear these words, go away, I never knew you. But to us, the blessed saints whom Christ has washed in the waters of baptism, we will feed on the taste of Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and, hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.